in practice, this can be presented even without knowing all the complexities of it. And I've been studying it for 10, 15, 20 years, and I still don't fully understand. What I would say, though, is in the clinic, just knowing that there's a link between your immune system and your immune health and pain can be enough to present this idea to patients. Do you feel that when you have pain, you're doing damage or do you feel that you're guarding it or protecting it or is it a little bit of both? So I give them three options. So you're actually then inviting the patient to think, huh, yeah, it hurts, but I don't think I'm doing damage. I think it's just, it's just pain. And I say, do you notice yourself protecting it? Because I notice your arm is, is like this, you're holding it. Oh yeah, I do that all the time because I don't want to hurt myself. It's become a habit, particularly in cases of persistent pain. So this is where I can introduce the concept. While we do know there is a link, this doesn't mean you're making it up. This is there are cells set out there to protect you, immune cells, that, involve, that create movements, that create protective responses, that happen without you even realizing it. Ah. You know, I do notice that. It's a way to invite them in that then you'll hear the patient then might come up, their story will evolve uh, and they might come out with other other things. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. I noticed my neck gets tight and I then maybe you can look at that in an objective assessment and you can look at range of motion and when they do, say, for example, some slow breathing, something to reduce their upregulated sympathetic guarded state. Ah, just doing that, I feel like I have more movement. You haven't touched the shoulder. You haven't manipulated it. You've just allowed them to sort of downregulate their their system a little bit. And that's how I would do it in practice. That's exactly how I do it in practice. 